Hey guys, this lesson is on the components of a computer system and what the roles of those components are. So let's see what is inside your computer that makes it work. Well, the first thing, probably one of the most important things actually, is this guy, the motherboard. Yes, the motherboard. Now, before we continue, I'm going to apologize. This lesson does contain a little bit of reading. Okay, now I know I am a PowerPoint purist. I don't like more than three points on a slide and all that stuff. But there's some reading, okay? Sorry. There. Sorry about that. Okay. Anyway, I did underline the important parts, though. Okay, so we'll summarize. Let's have a look. The motherboard. The motherboard is a printed circuit board. That's important to know. And it allocates power and allows communication to and between the CPU, the RAM, and all the other hardware components. There you go. That's the paraphrased version. Okay. Next thing that we have... A central processing unit, a CPU. Okay, so what does the CPU do? Well, basically the CPU handles all the instructions. It takes input, all right, that we provided, we give input. It then processes that input and provides output or gives the instructions to whatever's supposed to do that thing, okay? I'm paraphrasing. Your job is to freeze the screen and read and then you can, <laughs> yeah, focus on that. Okay, RAM. There's a stick of RAM. Okay, a dual inline memory module. That's what it looks like. We also call it RAM, random access memory. RAM allows information to be stored and retrieved while the computer is on. And we know that this is temporary storage because if your computer gets hit by lightning or something, like we said before, boom, everything is gone. RAM gets cleared. If you shut down your computer and you didn't save your work, whatever you were working on, not saved, it's gone, okay. RAM we also call a volatile memory. Volatile means it can change. It's always changing because we can like constantly be putting different things into RAM, okay? It's always changing, it's not a solid state, okay? What else, if the computer's turned off, uh, we know that we'll lose everything. And programs and files that are open are placed in RAM before we do any saving. So we've, we've discussed this before, you guys know what RAM is, okay? Here is a funky looking thing. Okay, this is a read only memory. This is a ROM chip. Okay, a ROM chip. So what it what do we do with read only memory? I mean, if you can only read stuff, well, let's have a look. A storage medium that is used with computers and devices. Data stored in ROM may only be read, and ROM is used mostly for firmware updates and is non-volatile. So there, now you know what the read-only memory is for. It's for stuff that's not supposed to change and you're not supposed to be able to change it. Okay. But you do get some things you can change in the form of electronically erasable ROM. Okay. Electronically erasable read-only memory. Okay. Called EEPROM. EEPROM. I don't actually know how computer guys say that. Like... EEPROM, EEPROM, I don't know, we'll have to find that out. Here's an example, okay, there's a BIOS chip. So let's read this. Electric, electrically erasable programmable read-only memory, take a breath, EEPROM, can be erased and reprogrammed using an electrical charge. So EEPROM allows the user to update the computer BIOS, the basic input-output system of the computer, without having to open the computer or remove any chips. That's pretty cool. So we can actually program this. Although it is read-only memory, it's able to be erased with an electric charge, which they, and then it can be rewritten with a new updated firmware, for example, for your computer. That's quite cool. So let's get back to this motherboard, because on this motherboard, you're going to see lots and lots. It's a very colorful thing, isn't it? I mean, it's very colorful. And there's lots and lots of things that goes on onto this motherboard. So what I've done is, I've created like a zooming in interactive thingy my bobby for our uh, journey onto the motherboard. Have a look. Let's start over here. Right. So here you can see we have a couple of ports. So what kind of ports are there? Well, we've got this one over here. That is called the PS2 mouse and keyboard ports. I don't know why it's called PS2. Maybe somebody can tell me. I mean, I didn't really look it up, to be honest. You don't find them a lot. Um because we use USB for pretty much everything nowadays, but you still get computers with those ports on. So one was the mouse, one was the keyboard. They were color-coded. I think the keyboard was green and the mouse was purple, I think. The VGA port, VGA, video graphics adapter, we know that. And of course, that is what, what the, uh, the monitor plugs into or an external monitor. And also the DVI port, also graphics, digital video interface. Yes, you remember that. And also... Uh, external monitor could plug into that or a funky projector I suppose 
Right, moving down, let's see what we got here. Here we have the HDMI port, and we know that because we know what an HDMI port, uh, HDMI connector looks like. Okay, that's an optical port. It's covered because optical uses uh, bursts of light, so that's got to be covered. All right, there can't be any light in the way there. Then we have our good old faithful USB ports. Right at the top, they have an onboard NIC port. NIC, network interface card. Yes, to connect our Ethernet cable. That would Plug it in and you're on the network. Hey, hey. And then, of course, here we have the sound card ports. And each one of those is to either go to a specific speaker, like the sub or the top left or top right or center or a microphone input or just the main speakers out. Okay, so those are all the different colors as well. So it's actually good that they're color coded. Otherwise, I would make such a mess. Here we have something we were just introduced to a minute or two ago. A ROM chip, read-only memory. There it is there. That's what it looks like, okay? So that could have all kinds of firmware or something on it. These two slots, very, very interesting, okay? We call these PCI card slots, okay? PCI stands for Peripheral Card Interface. So when we want to, like, add something to the motherboard, like a different device of some sort, or more functionality in the form of a different... I don't know, something, I can't think of a word for now. We plug it into the PCI slot. Okay. And there is the CMOS battery. The CMOS battery makes sure that the clock uh, on the computer stays running and that it's got the right date and the time and all of that. Okay. Moving to the little corner over there, we've got these little guys, look like little red, yellow, not red, yellow, red, I was trying to say Lego, red Lego blocks. Okay. Those are SATA, SATA ports. That's for hard drives, guys. We plug our hard drives into that. That's so cool. It's so easy. Much better than the, the older motherboards we used to have. Then, zooming up to the top right of our motherboard, we got to recognize those. If you were holding a stick of RAM in your hand right now, you would know that it would fit into that thing, okay? Those are DIMM slots, D-I-M-M, -M, dual inline memory module slots. That's where the RAM goes. The RAM just slots into that, just clips in. You make sure those little two things on the side just clip and hold it in place nice and fast. Okay. And of course, last but not least, the most important part. What goes there, guys? The CPU. The CPU sits over there. That is the CPU socket and everything goes in there. So there you go, guys. There is a good introduction to hardware and what is inside of a computer system.